Right, sticking with the authentication that we have to do over a network. Um, and this is, uh, well, these protocols um, are mostly about a, a local network or a relatively local network, maybe a campus-wide network. Um, they, well, I suppose it could be a, a wider area private network that uses, uh, well, anyway. Um, so we've got uh, centralized authentication on a local network. And we've got um, uh, a centralized location where we only have to make the uh, the authentication. You know, our authentication server is is possibly one, possibly others. We'll we'll um, uh, talk about things like Kerberos. Um, I think we'll talk about things like Kerberos. Anyways, um, we've got you know a server, uh, possibly a set of servers that do the authentication for us. So the authentication information does not have to be uh, distributed, does not have to be um, updated on every machine. Um, so we, you know, give somebody authentication to use the network uh, based on their identity. And, uh, uh, you know, grant them, you know, once they're, they're on the network, they can say that they're fine they get to use the network and, and the various resources. And again, we've got uh, various authorizations that can go along with that as to which resources they can use. But um, there is uh, RADIUS, and RADIUS is an acronym. Uh, stands for Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service. And so people are uh, dialing into our network. Um, they want to get onto our network and then from, you know, uh, outside dialing in, um, they want to have access to a variety of different systems and resources. Um, it may just be their uh, network itself that they want access to. But in any case, <coughs> um, so uh, the... Identification, um, authentication, authorization. Um, and, well, we don't have the accountability built into Radius, I don't think. Um, and uh, we're going to talk a bit about uh, node versus user authentication. This is this is definitely user authentication. Um, uh, we'll talk about IPsec in a bit, and that is definitely node authentication, although you can use the encryption function in uh, IPsec to protect authentication information. Uh, but that, you know, the actual authentication would be handled by something else. So, um, uh, Radius has... Uh, a server, it's got a protocol, there's, uh, you know, various forms of, of challenges that go on, uh, has a centralized database. Now, there was uh, a uh, subsequent development in, in this area called Diameter. Diameter is not an acronym. It doesn't uh, really stand for anything, except that it was twice as good as Radius. Ha ha. Uh, anyways, um, we've talked uh, about the challenge handshake authentication protocol, um, which, you know, is, is good over uh, this type of situation because it doesn't rely on a replay attack. Um, uh, you know, like the password authentication protocol where, unfortunately, um, because it sends the credentials in plain text, um, it's a static password. Um, it can be replayed and reused. And then, of course, there's the point-to-point -point protocol that has no authentication whatsoever. So, uh, we don't want to 
necessarily rely on something like that. Now, the, um, there, you know, the, these are uh, particular protocols, um, but uh, people are, are trying to do um, centralized authentication in other ways. Um, for example, um, they use directory systems, and, and so uh, they may have a, a simple directory system which is not meant for security purposes, but it provides a centralized access to uh, information that can be used in terms of authentication. And of course, particularly, uh, there is Active Directory, which uh, is not only a directory structure, but is involved with uh, security and authentication. Unless, of course, it's the Active Directory that gets attacked. And there have been uh, numerous uh, attacks of different types on Active Directory. Now, um, I can't remember the name of the worm that actually took it down. It, it was a big furor um, uh, a few years back. Uh, I remember that Maersk was one of the uh, major companies that got taken down. It certainly wasn't the only one. <clears throat> but they, I mean, in a sense, Maersk had um, uh, done the right thing. They had 150 odd um, uh, active directory servers. And of course, uh, you know, they could share information, they could back up the information from one to another. Unfortunately, uh, because this was a worm, it didn't involve any user interaction, and so it was directly attacking the machines, and so, of course, it was, you know, attacking and taking down the Active Directory servers. Out of the 150-odd uh, servers, one happened to be offline at the time. It was down for maintenance, service, whatever, it was, or simply, you know, they had a lack of connection lack of network connection to that office. I can't remember why it was out of service, but it was, which meant that when they realized what had happened, this was the only Active Directory server that they could use to restore all of their access to all of their functions. And uh, this is unfortunately what happens when you rely on Microsoft. Microsoft is very big on if they are going to provide their security, they are going to be the uh, system in charge. Um, they've done this with their version of, of Kerberos. Uh, Kerberos, uh, of course, gets as closest that you can to a sort of single sign-on system. It runs on uh, many different platforms. Uh, but if Windows is one of them, the Windows Active Directory, the, the Windows version of Kerberos, has to be uh, the authentication server. So um, because of that, uh, it, you know, they had to use Active Directory. Uh, Active Directory had to be the central authentication server. Uh, they had to send a systems guy and a security guy down to wherever this office was, someplace in Africa, get the local administrator to pull the drive very carefully and hand carry it back to head office uh, where they were able to recover their authentication information. Uh, that is not something you want to do. So that's a very extreme centralization and uh, the risks that go along with it.